is good morning everyone this is Lorenzo here welcome back to a mission a day episode 5 first of all a hearty welcome to my new subscribers there is a whole two of you thanks for subscribing glad you're enjoying the video and let's go on to what we're going to do today as you may recall in the last video I had a small cock up with the mission controller I forgot to cash in the mission uh, this is of course a big problem I managed to fix that by going back into the game redoing the mission thus unlocking it and then editing the money so that it is at the amount that we left it off with. I made sure not to gather any science points so the vessel I did that mission with was properly disposed of by crashing not recovering. So today what we are going to do we are going to the moon and we are going to land a probe there. As you can see here in the mission screen we have several other options as well. We might go to Minmus here and we can do a Sputnik number 4, a high polar orbit around Gerben, but we need more sensors for this which we have not unlocked in the technology tree and this Minmus mission is probably going to come up in one of the next episodes. But first we are going to land on the moon. I'm going to select this mission and show you the craft I have designed for this. So we proceed to the vehicle assembly building and let's see what we have there. Here you can see the mission 4C for cheat. This was the rocket I used to uh, fix the controller plugin with. Made it a little bit more powerful so I could do it really quickly. Right, so here we have mission number 5. It's got a smaller part count. I went for a quite minimalistic approach. As you can see here the probe core with the rechargeable battery, our new solar panels and the trusty antenna, a fuel tank and a small engine with a few lights and landing legs so it can land. Two goo containers, I could have only brought one but I need them for symmetry because this, this mission will not be returning to Kerbin, it will just be transmitting. So this will be landing and this here is the injection stage with four big boosters that will be firing in pairs as you can see here in the staging bar. I hope this will give us enough delta V to get to the moon and land. Now my plan to do that, my plan for that is to get into a polar or at least an inclined moonar orbit first, make a few circles, transmit some data from all the different areas of the moon and then go in for a landing and transmit the findings from the surface. So I'm going to launch here and as you are probably accustomed to if nothing untowards happens, I'm going to fast forward that bit. So, see you in space. So, here we are on our way to the moon. As it turns out, our fuel tank for the lander is almost half dry already. Now, we probably have enough delta V in it to do a landing, but I'm going to forego the inclination change to a polar orbit. That is probably a little bit ambitious, uh, so I am not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to make a regular orbit around the equator of the moon and I hope we get some science points in there. First let's observe the mystery goo here, see if we can get some points. Now Kerbin is pretty much milked dry, at least the space of it. We get 1.2 science points and a 40% value for transmitting. Uh, this is because we've done this in the previous missions quite a few times already. Uh, we're going to do it anyway because power, joy of joys, is no longer an issue. We have a rechargeable battery and a full complement of solar panels. Now you notice I put these solar panels all around the probe core on all sides and on the top. This is to minimize the chance that due to a uh, unfortunate orientation of the probe there will be no sunlight reaching the panels and the batteries drain. If the batteries do drain the probe is dead, you cannot control it and all you can do is hope that at some point it will uh, catch some rays again. This was one of the benefits I was uh, anticipating of having with a polar orbit because as you can see the Kerbin and the moon here are in the plane with this with the Sun with Kerbal uh, so if we are in a polar orbit around the moon going like that we are always illuminated now if we're going into an equatorial orbit we of course will not be so 
we, um, our battery is the 200 charge. They will, I think, run out on the dark side of the moon, but no matter, because our solar panels cover every side, they will automatically recharge and uh, uh, enable us to transmit science. Uh, speaking of that, let's transmit some science here from high space over Kerbin. Observing the goo. This is a little bit more, but still not a lot. We're just getting about one science point off this. You can see it takes almost 40 energy to transmit this science, but fortunately the solar panels charge that right back up. This is uh, one of the biggest advantages in our technology progress yet. So, crossing the threshold. Ooh, I crossed that pretty quickly. The prediction went a little bit haywire, but here we are with an periapsis of 700 kilometers. We are going to lower that right down to a handsome, I'm going to think about 10 kilometers. Then we can pass right low over the moon. Oh, we're still at time acceleration. 12 kilometers should do it. What I'm going to do is I will do that burn, pass over the moon a few circles and well, probably just the one circle and do the science we have planned. So I'll fast forward that for you. So, here we have our first mission problem, and it is a slight problem, you're experiencing it right now. It is very dark here on this side of the moon, and this is where our low point of the trajectory is. It will be a few days at least until this rotates far enough to be the light side. So we're going to go ahead and expend the extra fuel to land on the light side, the bright side of the moon. I think we have enough fuel for that. If not, then we'll crash. One of the things that's... Hey, why can't I... It doesn't allow me to start the engine. Oh, look at that! I'm out of electric charge. There's no control I can do. I was talking about this before, and now it happened. Fortunately, the probe is tumbling. That means as soon as it gets out from the shadow of the moon here, it will get light on its solar panels and we will get regain control. Now I was going to say there's in real life actually no such thing as a dark side of the moon. All sides of the moon are, are uh, cyclically illuminated just as it is with Kerbin, just as it is with the Earth. As you can see this works the same here in KSP as it does in real life. The moon rotates in such a way that um, the same face is always facing the Earth or Kerbin. This is called a tidally locked orbit. And this means that from Earth we'll always see the same bit, hence us calling the other bit the dark side. As you can quite clearly see here, as, as this bit goes around the Earth or Kerbin here, uh, each face of it is illuminated. It's just as they last a little bit longer than they do on Earth. So I just wanted to share that with you. And now I'm going to time warp up to get us out of this electric predicament. So, here we have the sun and electric charge for everyone, enough to go around. So I'm immediately going to turn around and break. In fact, no, I will not be able to do this at periapsis because my power will be insufficient. So this is quite a dilemma. Either I'm going to land on the dark side or I'm going to risk not having the power to do so. So now we're definitely committed for a landing because our trajectory is now intersecting the ground and this is definitely on the dark side. I'm going to keep on braking and see if we can get that landing point somewhere on the light side. So here we are. This looks this looks like it might be in the light. Yes, it should be in the light. Still be in the light when we get here. We'll get here in 44 minutes, so not long at all. We'll pass over 200 kilometers of the moon before we get there, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to fast forward the video. I'm just going to do the time acceleration in game. This 
works well enough for that. Doesn't take too long at all. Going to do a few more science readings. By the way, this moon is really looking good. It's been a few updates since I've last been here in KSP, and well, I must say they did a really good job with the craters, the textures, and the overall feel of it. It feels like a lump of rock in space, which I presume is what it is. It is what it is. Great. Very deep here. Go to Lorenzo for your philosophical quandaries. It is what it is. It is a rock in space. We are now fast, while I'm talking gibberish, fast plummeting to the surface. This is not ideal. We're at 36 kilometers. And if I remembered the trajectory... Here, we're just, here it just says we have to land on the moon, great. If I remember the trajectory from the map here, we're coming in fairly steep. Well, not that steep, actually. Should be fine. I brought lights in the event we had to land on the dark side, so we could. But we're not going to, we're just going to land here. And we are currently at 580 meters per second. And if you don't know, it's very important to mm, hit the ground at a slower speed than that. And more importantly, not have any lateral velocity. If you look down straight at the moon, you can see the ground is scrolling under the craft. This means we have a very high lateral velocity. If we land like this, even if our vertical velocity is almost zero, we will topple over, crash, and be destroyed. We want to come straight down. I think this uh, is fairly obvious. I'm going to light the engine here and start to scrub most of that lateral velocity. You can see the yellow retrograde indicator is still pointing quite near to the horizon. This is another way of gauging your horizontal velocity as a function of your vertical velocity. If it's at 45 degrees, uh, it's 50-50. You have as much vertical velocity as you have horizontal velocity, and as near it gets to the top, the fewer horizontal velocities you have. Here we go. We're at 30 meters per second total speed. Now very slow. So we have killed most of our horizontal velocity and now it's just a question of waiting dropping down and gently landing now what we could do is light the engine and make sure we're not coming in too fast this would be slightly inefficient because we're constantly braking constantly standing on our engine as it were and that's of course not free it costs us fuel and as you can see here we don't have that in abundance what we instead want to do is uh, fall as far as we dare and then brake at the last second. That way we are uh, only cancelling out the speed that we really do have to cancel out to not crash, but not wasting fuel uh, lingering around, uh, standing on a rocket plume, spending too much time in lunar orbit. So this is a game of efficiency. And of course, if you m misjudge that, you will not be able to slow down in time and you will hit the ground rather fast, which is not the goal of this experiment. And we're at our lowest point yet. Let's see if the goo has anything to, anything to say about this. In space near the moon, it's still less dense, but we've got 11 science points for this, so we can go ahead and transmit that. We are in the sun, we have all the power we need. Really a great luxury this is now. As you can see, we still haven't completely cancelled out our horizontal velocity, so I'm going to try... Oh, look at that. The marker switch to surface mode. This is something you have to do if you're doing the horizontal velocity bit. Switch it to surface mode. You want to know your speed relative to the surface, not to the center of the moon. We're trying to land on the surface, not on the center of it. So what I'm doing now is trying to gently push this red, this, this red, this yellow marker right onto the dot at the top of the compass, which would indicate zero horizontal velocity. I think that is as about as good as it's going to get. I'm going to enable the SAS stability control. Hopefully that will be able to do it. And as you can see, we're coming down at about 100 meters per second. We're only six kilometers up. I'm going to deploy the landing legs, I think. And slow us down a little bit. So go for 30 meters. I tried to hit G, which I thought was the hotkey for the landing legs, but apparently it's not like that anymore. So I'm just going to do it manually. So we have the legs lowered. I'm going to illuminate them for added spectacular effects. Spectacular effects. For added effects, for added spectacle, please. So here we can see, as we reduce our horizontal velocity, the 
small vertical component we have becomes more apparent. And we're going to tip over and try and reduce that. Because we really want to come down as softly as possible. Now, this level of control, I'm not sure if that's realistic for a probe. But then again, our probe does not have software. We have people at home on Kerbin flying it. And that is me. Feeling confident, we're coming down at about 10 meters per second. We have a lot enough fuel to spend enough fuel to spend to do this in a gentle, controlled fashion. We're going to land and we're aiming for three meters per second or less. Let's try and do it at two or less. Why not? And as soon as I touch the ground, I want to be cutting this engine so the probe can settle. So don't fall over, don't fall over, don't fall over. It did not fall over, in fact. That's great. We can turn off the stability control, turn off the engine. It was already turned off. Turn off the lights here. And here we are, landed on the moon. Didn't go for the polar orbit, went instead for an easy equatorial orbit and landed here. The downside is we didn't get to see all of the moon, we didn't get to do science over the moonar poles, but this will make it easier for any future craft to rendezvous up with this as we get into that same equatorial orbit and then we can uh, land something right next here to it to see how this probe is doing so we have a science value of 40 from the goo we're going to transmit that right on home and we're going to repeat that transmission a few times because the probe is here it's got all the time in the world it's not going to go anywhere and we want those science points as i said before we have the solar panels so this will remain functioning for quite a while. Look at that, look at that. Transmitting all the science. Oh, the antenna, they even come up and down as you're transmitting. So this is going to be the last transmission. Or I'm just going to drain the battery. Ah, and the battery is drained. So no more transmissions from this probe. We cannot recover it, obviously, as it is on the moon and not there on Kerbin. So we're going to leave it behind. Return to the space center. <gasps> no, we're not going to leave it behind. Not going to repeat my mistake from last time. We're going to finish the current goal. Bam! And this mission was fairly cheap. It was just under 40,000 to launch this probe, as it was very small and thus needed a small rocket. This is incidentally also the reason why there isn't a materials bay on this. They weigh quite a bit, especially compared to the probe core and the fuel here. So we didn't bring that. But we have 180,000 cronies now for the next mission. Before doing that, though, let's go to the Space Center and have a look at our science. It's night here on Kerbin. That doesn't stop our scientists from endlessly researching. We have 128 points. Not too much. We can clearly see that a sample return mission where you bring back the sample. You have the crew that can do reports and the actual science experiments are returned to Kerbin. They give you a lot more science than these probes. So I'm thinking for the next mission we're definitely going to send a guy again. So what do we have to choose for? We have here letters and wheels. We don't want that. We have here letters and thermometers. Thermometers will give us science, I think. And it was a requisite for that one, uh, that one mission. So we might want to get this, but not quite yet because it will wipe out all our science points. We have these. We cannot even get them. They are too expensive, so we're not going to look at them. We have here the advanced flight control, we get inline stabilizers, another probe core, not that high on the list. Here's jet engines, I don't want to do that. We have here is more solar panels, no. We have more decouplers, we have the larger fuel tanks. No, just the larger structural parts, not the larger fuel tanks. So this is useless for now. And here we have fuel ducts which are great for efficiency, and RCS systems. These are fairly high on my list. And here we get uh, the larger fuel tanks and the radial mount liquid engine. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and get the fuel ducts, get this science out of the way. And then after that, I'm going to work on this because I have a feeling that we will be able to get the big rockets after that. What we have just unlocked here, they are still gray. They will need something from this, I think. Anyway, that's all for tomorrow. This was mission 5 on day 5 of a mission a day. Those numbers will hopefully stay in sync, otherwise I don't know what's going on. 
and let's have a sneak peek at next mission, next, next tomorrow's mission. We can crash on Minmus, or we can do the Sputnik. I'm not sure. I might decide we have some money in the bank. I might decide to go for a science mission and just land on the moon and return some rocks from it. Or I might go with the mission controller and earn money for a crash mission to Minmus. Come back tomorrow to find out which it's going to be. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment, subscribe or share it with all your friends. Whatever you do, I don't really mind. Uh, thanks for watching again. I'm just rambling now. Have a good day. Bye.